Hey, welcome back to PS113, Introduction to Psychology, and specifically Chapter 9, Motivation and Emotion. This is Part 1. We've got some key terms and ideas to go over, and these include the definition of motivation, intrinsic motivation specifically, and extrinsic motivation, followed by instinct, drive, and homeostasis. Well, you probably learned by now that human behavior is very complex with many pieces to the puzzle. There's not one single theory of psychology that explains everything, let alone the topic of motivation and emotion. But what we will do in this chapter is to look at several of the big ideas that have been influential across the study of motivation and emotion. And that'll be good. That'll be good enough. If I ask you what is motivation, how do you respond to that? We frequently use that word motivation, so what do you mean when you say I'm really motivated or I'm having motivational problems? Maybe you're referring to just getting going, like a runner here coming out of the starting blocks. Maybe you have no problem starting, but you have trouble directing and keeping it up like a runner during the main part of the race. Or maybe you have trouble finishing strong with enthusiasm, like a runner trying to sprint to the finish line. So you see there are several aspects to the idea of motivation, which we will define as all the processes that initiate, direct, and sustain behavior. To introduce our first useful theory of motivation, I want you to look at our girl here chasing the soccer ball up and down the field on Saturday morning when she could be sleeping in. My question to you is, why does she do this? What is her motivation? What is your first thought that comes to mind? Did you say, well, maybe she just loves running, kicking the ball and even falling down sometimes and just rolling around in the grass. Well, that's good. That's a source of motivation. What might be another source of motivation? Think about that. Maybe you said she's competitive. She loves the game and she just feels great inside when she plays well. That's a good source of motivation. Did anybody think She's not out there because of soccer. She's out there because that's what the in crowd at school does, and she wants to be part of that clique. If those girls were volunteering at the hospital at United Way, she'd be spending her time there. But that's a source of motivation too, isn't it? And lastly, did anybody say, well, her parents are making her do this for six weeks? She doesn't want to be there, but she's going along with it anyway just to keep peace in the house. Is that a source of motivation? You better believe it is. The first two motives I went over suggest that she really enjoys playing soccer. She really likes it. We call this intrinsic motivation, defined as the desire to behave in a certain way because it's enjoyable or, or satisfying in and of itself. Nobody has to make her do that. But the last two motives suggest she really doesn't care for the game. Instead, she's motivated by an incentive. And we call this extrinsic motivation, defined as the desire to behave in a certain way in order to gain some external reward or to avoid some undesirable consequence, punishment. Motivation is rarely, if ever, 100% intrinsic or 100% extrinsic. It'll be some combination of the two. I want you to think about your motivation at work, at school, or at the gym. Where do you fall on the spectrum of it, intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation. 
Well, let's shift gears a little bit. Motives and motivation can be primary or biological, that is, they're unlearned. We come wired that way. Or they can be secondary or social, that is, they are learned. An instinct is a pure example, maybe the purest example of biological motivation, which we define as a fixed behavior pattern that is characteristic of every member of the species and is assumed to be genetically programmed. Defined this way, most psychologists, and myself included, agree that we humans do not have instincts, certainly in the way that animals have instincts. However, we do have biological forces that motivate some human behaviors, and we call those drives, and we define these as an internal state of tension or arousal that is brought about by an underlying need and that the organism is motivated to reduce. For example, if you go too long without eating or drinking, your hunger and thirst drive kicks in like this guy, and you have to eat or drink to reduce that tension. Some people would make the case that hunger and thirst is an instinct. But please go back and study the definition of instinct that I just went over. As human beings, there are many behaviors we can engage in to satisfy hunger, not the least of which includes your previous experiences, the available choices, your personality, social and even cultural factors. So we're not denying that these are powerful, but it really doesn't come up to the level of an instinct and because it's so there's so many things going on there. The precise time that you or I reduce this tension can be understood as homeostasis, defined as the natural tendency of the body to maintain a balanced state in order to ensure physical survival. Think of a, this will be our example, a thermostat in your home, kind of like this one here. This thermostat is set to 67 degrees. If the temperature rises one or two degrees higher, the thermostat is motivated, if you will, to switch on the air conditioning and bring it back down to the optimal level of 67 degrees. However, if the temperature drops one or two degrees, the thermostat is motivated to switch on the heating and bring it back up to the optimal level of 67 degrees. The thermostat does this automatically without any manual adjustments and operates according to the principle of homeostasis. However, the optimal setting level for the house thermostat differs from person to person. You might like 67 degrees, but I might prefer 64 or 65 degrees. This person is definitely in my house, and a third person might have it set for 70 degrees. Well, in the same way, the level of tension that's required to motivate an action to reduce a biological drive like hunger also differs from person to person. And it depends on individual differences, as well as the total mix of other primary and secondary motives at that time. Well, that's all for now. I'll see you next time in part two. Later.